Hey, it's Goodlight here. Uh, and uh, hey, let's uh, get Apple CarPlay working. All right, so we're going to install the hub, USB hub, and the cables into the uh, Mazda MX-5 Miata. And these are the same hubs and cables that you can use for any Mazda with the uh, Mazda Connect. Yeah, I know, you're supposed to call it Mazda here in the U.S., but uh, anyway, um, first, you need to upgrade your firmware. You got to be running version 70 and above. So I already put 70 uh, 00100 on mine, and so that's good to go. I've made a video of that, very detailed, that... I might put up. If you are interested in seeing that, let me know. Uh, there's several others uh, that are out there. Um, I went into quite a bit of detail though, so if you find if you think that'll be helpful, please put it in the comments. Let me know if I should post it. So the firmware is updated. The next thing you got to do is get the kit and. You got to make sure you get the correct kit. You're going to need the hub. The hub will have, just for the, uh, the orange sticker in it, and it's got a, there's the back of it. The kit is going to come with, and I've already wrapped the extremely long cables that go from the CMU down to the hub comes with some foam tape that's to silence any uh, vibrations, noises, and a bunch of zip ties. And if maybe this will show, this is the uh, part number for the kit. And I suggest you get on the forums for your vehicle and that'll I'm sure they've got a thread related to Apple CarPlay and or and, uh, Android Auto that'll have, you know, who's selling them because, you know, at the time of right now, it's Mazda 6s and uh, I think CX-9s only, but as far as, you know, what most Mazda dealers will sell you, uh, at least here in the States. But uh, again, check the forums. They'll also give you information on what firmware is current and where to find it. And I want to give a shout out to Ash8. Uh, he has been extremely helpful, uh, as well as a couple others, on uh, getting this information out there. And he's got a page that is currently there. I don't know how long it'll, st it'll be up. That's why I'm not mentioning it. Forums, he's, he posted his there. And it, uh, check to see what's available when you do yours. Uh, as a disclaimer, do this. you're doing this at your own risk. If you want to be safe, take it to your dealer, have them do it if they'll do it. And again, depending on timing, uh, they may or may not do it. I will try to put the kit number in the description as well. So the, I suggest before you go out to the car that you go ahead and do all the taping of your wires. Depending on your car, if you're doing the MX-5 Miata, you're going to have, this is how you want to tape it up. The instructions, which again you can find on uh, the Czech forums, Ash8 posted uh, a link to where these are. And of course they're in mill millimeters. Uh, which I have translated here if you can see it. The tape pieces are 30 by 100 millimeters. So, like right here where it says 300 mil, that's just three pieces. And you can see there's one, two, and three. So that's the one I did first. I just measured from the end here. Uh, one tip. Put these together line them up so that they are both facing the same way. If you've got them twisted around, you may have to twist them to get them to fit. So I did that with both ends. That'll save a little bit of trouble when you're trying to connect them. Hopefully they're not both upside down. 
The instructions said eight to nine strips to go around the big extra excess wire. That is nine, and as you can see, it's a little iffy right here. I mean, it's probably enough, but I had a lot left over, so I may end up, I'm gonna go ahead and do the install, and I may end up with a bunch of extra pieces, which I will then put on, a, on this to uh, make sure that it's not gonna rub or rattle inside the dash. So we're out at the car now, and Hopefully, I'm going to try to keep everything in the frame of the, the picture here. I, it's on a tripod, so you can hopefully it'll be a sta more stable image, and I can use both hands and still film. Try to show you everything. So the first thing you want to do is remove the scuff plate on the rider's side. And that is bit done by pulling up on the scuff plate, apparently from the back first, front, alright, front seems to be a little tougher, and then set it over at a, in a safe spot. Next, you want to pull up on the rubber piece here. Pull that out. That is going to move so that you can pull this inside the footwell trim back enough. You don't have to pull it completely out, but you got to pull it back enough to expose this 10 mil bolt, which will then remove. drop and thankfully it went onto the floor all right now we got to move this now you notice I taped it because uh, I don't want to scratch it a pillar inside it should be easier from the top to start and then it'll slide up. Now if you have a speaker here, you're going to have to deal with that. Which I did not anticipate. I should have, but... Well, rather than unplugging it, I've just got it laying down I, uh, onto the dash here. Next, you want to pull this section out and we can do that, I'm hoping. And I'm hoping this is showing. All right, it's pretty tight. Okay, that freed up the rubber piece. And now, nice and careful. All right, now let's go put it on the towel so it doesn't get scratched. Okay, so now we're going to this piece out now I will tell you that this piece is right here you'll see a crease that's because it's a separate piece don't try to pull from down here under this this it won't come out that's so pull the top piece and it's a little hard to get underneath it between them ah, there we go and that's what it looks like. Let me put it in the back seat. Oh, wait, I don't have a back seat. All right, so 
there are two screws holding this piece in. I took those out, screwdriver, Phillips, and I kind of slid that out of the way. Um, I was hoping I could just break the two tabs on top and then pull this out, but there's still the tabs on the bottom. And I am wor and I'm leery of trying to stick something in the bottom and breaking the bottom tabs because I'm leery I'm going to scratch it up. So we'll just go with what the instructions say. Uh, we need to remove the shifter knob, which unscrews. All right, so now... You're going to want to pop up your little cubby hole. Sorry, I'm in the way. Uh, and you're going to want to lift up the center piece, not the side, the center piece. And it's going to pop loose. And you're going to have to un disconnect the command knob. All right, I'm hoping that you can see this a little bit. Uh, the catch on this is at the front and it's embedded into the quite deep into the, the plastic so you got to push that in and then pull it all right Whew. that was a tough one and we'll move this out of the way Gives us access here. Okay, let me warn you. This piece here, do not pull up on this very hard. There are two screws right here holding it down. So do not think that you can just pull this one up. All right, so after removing those two screws, that lets you lift up here. That should free up. this piece there okay there it goes now ah, it just pulls out the side so lift up pop it out the side okay and that should that would free this up I believe except I may have to remove ah, I couldn't find the clip on this one either okay I think it's probably on the bottom okay well, let me work on it all right so the clip for this one is actually on the top it's mine was very tight fit you then pull this straight forward there's a clip down here that will unsnap then you fight with it a little bit to get it around there and you now have access and you can unplug these that one's obvious clip on top this one clip on top boom we now have access i already broke the top ones off hoping that that would be enough but it was not squeeze those in And it's out. Anyone want to buy a uh, USB hub for a Mazda? Let me know. Cheap. Cheap. Okay, so now I got to find me the old clips. Yeah, I'll be back. So now we do need to take this piece off. And if you have a trim tool that might help on this one there we go all right and that's one piece along here and there is the hazard and that one's pretty obvious it's on the left side on mine gone now we've got the 10 mil 
bolt. Now, <laughs> well, I thought I could reach it. There we go. Key on this one is don't drop it. Uh, I read where someone had apparently dropped theirs and it was a challenge to find. That should free this up. I believe we may have to... Whoa! Okay. Loosen that one. Hopefully without breaking it. Now... That should have freed this up. There we go. Pull a little from the right side first, it seems. There. And the left. they're loose I'm gonna have to go Ugh. all right I'm gonna have to get on the other side of the car to get the gauge cluster uh, top piece off all right now that is very loose it has it appears to have okay there's a wire that comes into here so I'm gonna leave that sitting hopefully and I can pull this out it clears now be sure to disconnect your negative battery cable Always do that before you start working on your car. It's a good safety thing. Again, you're doing this at your own risk. I'm providing this video only for entertainment purposes. And sorry about the lack of entertainment. But, uh, here we go. It's pretty tight. There. I suggest you protect your dash as much as you can. And you'll see we've got a lot of wires here. That one is at the top. And let me see what we need to do. All right, every single clip on these is at the top. And I'm hoping this is focused enough. There it is. That is the CMU. See the wiring. And now we got to deal with all this wiring. All right. Oh boy. That was fun. So, get your uh, bundle of cables. So, I had the way I ended up doing it, I'll just uh, tell you what I ended up doing because uh, I tried several ways of doing it. This is the only way I could get it to work. I actually put the bundle uh, underneath the... Let me get a flashlight. All right, I ended up putting the bundle in first. You can see how it lays. I, f in, I bent it like a horseshoe and then slid it in uh, from the left to the right. The cables that run down, those are the wrapped ones. You see that yellow wire? If you followed that yellow wire down as it's pointed, there's a little uh, opening and it'll drop straight down. there so you can see my camera would focus where I want it to focus you can see that the cables are laying there 
and we're ready to move forward. Um, the next step is to take uh, some of the foam tape and wrap this and then you fold it up and tie wrap all, all of this together. I'm hoping you can see this. This is the plug. It is wrapped. And then I have the tie bent back and I have the tie wrap around it. Now I don't have it tight yet. I want to make sure that these can all be connected to what they're supposed to connect to and I may not even tighten it all the way anyway. Um, there it's I'll tighten it a little more at least and then snip the extra length if my camera would focus there we go and uh, we still have these wires up here those will go into the CMU all right so your new hub is gonna plug in like so make sure they're all in you're good now we got to plug all the cables in. Hopefully you got lucky and they're the right size side up. And so these two, they can they actually can only plug in one way, and it looks like brown is to the left black is to the right and mine thankfully line up the correct direction and there they go okay the hub is plugged in you've got this other wire that goes up onto the uh, Heat warmer, seat heat warmers, seat warmers. All right, I'm gonna leave that sitting there because now we've got to work on the top. We're gonna start connecting the CMU. So let me get that all prepared. So hopefully you'll be able to see this. I have wrapped, it's the green wire connector and it's wrapped in the tape and the zip tied bent up. There's your new ones. Now I will be putting the CMU back in. I will set it up here, plug everything in, and then push it back. Um, well, I may, yeah, I may try to show that. I hope it's not too boring. All right, so again, you can't put these in the wrong one. They will not connect. So it's actually green on the right. And let me start the other side. That's the short one. I'm sorry, I'm probably in the way. Blue. Then we have the, the next connector. It's a white one. Blue one, and I'm going to go blue, the, one of the new blue ones, then the new green one, there goes my light, and then the top one. Okay, it is now plugged in, and try not to scratch everything up. Watch your dash gauge cluster cover. Okay, and so I will work on this to try to get it back and embed it in there. I'm not I won't waste your time. All right, with everything um, plugged in, uh, 
basically we're going to go in reverse order to get all the pieces together it be, make sure you line things up when you're pushing this back it was a little bit tricky you had to get the right angle and stuff and uh but you know as people have said on the forums and such it really is a lot like doing legos as long as you know the direction to pull or push then you should be good and so now we're just going to start uh putting the rest of it back together without messing anything up and if there is a something if i run into something that is not standard or it might be confusing to someone i will include it but uh i think you can probably reverse the process without any problems okay so before i get any farther uh, uh i don't have the phone plugged in yet but i have pressed the start stop button once so it is in uh, as accessory mode it is fully up you can see that the phone is connected via bluetooth now we're going to uh plug it in and see what happens um hmm. there's a couple things that aren't connected the command center is not connected so this could be interesting unlock iphone to use accessories apple carplay da 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 well yeah I'll agree. Maybe you can read that. Allow CarPlay with Mazda while phone is locked. Allow. Boom! We have Apple CarPlay. Sweet. All right, so it looks like everything is connected and uh I will uh, I won't get into how it works this is long enough as it is but looks like all the things are all the wirings connected so we are good we have Apple CarPlay now I will finish putting this mess together all right everything is back together everything has been tested and working even my Amazon music and uh, uh, a couple tips that I did find when putting stuff back together. The bottom dash, this piece, make sure you slide the bottom of it into the, the holes. There's, there's pins that got to go in the right holes right here. Make sure you get that in, then connect it. That bottom panel down there, I ended up just popping it off. It's got a little pin, you know, rivet thing in the, uh, in the back. Just pull that out and it'll come right off no biggie um, and I think that was it I gotta move my tape oh the blue painters tape speaking of tape so remember at the start when I said I used nine pieces on the big wadding of cable uh, I ended up with so I, my kit came with three pages of that foam tape I ended up with one and a half left over so don't worry about uh, only using nine pieces of tape on the bundled water, bundled wires. Now, I don't think it's going to be an issue having only done that, but uh, you've got plenty to play with. There's extra wire ties in there as well. So, uh, and yes, I know I got my phone up there and I won't need it now that I have CarPlay. Boom! All right, hopefully this was helpful. Uh, if so, please like, comment, subscribe, and uh, God bless.